Hey everyone, welcome back to part 3 of Octopode Wizard here with Ultraviolent 4. I'm a little bit freaked out because apparently when I press page up um, to start the recording, my game treats it like I just pressed 9 on my number pad. So by starting the recording I just moved up and right. I'm going to have to change that I guess. Interesting, okay. Uh, that could be very dangerous by starting starting every recording by first moving up and right. <laughs> Alright, so where are we? We're in a bailey. Um, we probably shouldn't be in a bailey. <laughs> um, first of all, uh, we came fairly close to dying. We're well, not fairly close to dying, but we were certainly taking quite a bit of risk in trying to get to the bailey in the first place. I was fighting enemies with barely any HP. Um, barely any mana, just to get in, which meant, first of all, it was dangerous getting here, but then when we actually did come in, we were nearly dead, and we were facing some centaurs that have uh, javelins of returning, and rather than just leaving, which is what I should have done, um, I decided to stick around, got super lucky by summoning, um, we got the ranger card, which creates ranged enemies, but we got two Yaktors who then just proceeded to shoot everything to death with their crossbows. So it was a little case of, and by a little I mean a very big case of, do what I say but not what I do. So I'm telling you, don't do all these things that I just did, don't repeat any of this um, as, I, as I do it. Um, but we're going to see um, if we can finish this off. This tends to be a good bailey in terms of loot because you often get um, manuals of fighting in particular, but also sometimes armor manuals don't help us, but you know, a manual of dodging would be good too. Alright, this should be okay now. We can cheese all these guys, the regular orcs, with the deep water, because we can move across it and then just shoot them from ranged. It's only the centaurs that we have to worry about, and when we're full HP we can just mephitic cloud them. So I'm actually, I'm not afraid about finishing it now. It was just coming in when we were low on HP. Uh, that was really quite scary. Uh, for Orc Warriors 2, uh, we can just mephitic him. Slowly ping him with magic darts. Just checking this stuff. He had a, I saw something of flaming. No, I imagined it. Okay, never mind. Uh, this door looks scary. I don't want to go in yet until I clear this outside. I'm going to guess that this is a mirror image, so this hallway is going to be the same at the top. So we'll do these two hallways before we start going through this door. Uh, because this is so slow, killing orc warriors who are in heavy armor. That guy's got play armor with magic darts. Um, oh, we got the double white dude. Um, they should just be able to kill it. Yeah, that's that's the thing about Octopode. With no AC, don't let stuff hit you. It really hurts. As long as you don't let stuff hit you, though, it's strong. <laughs> Alright, I think that's probably this bit. Yeah. None of those guys... Oh, there's a corpse. Alright, so we get to eat up. Alright, so this, this room here is going to be similar to the one we just left. So we're probably going to meet more centaurs, or not. If he falls into the deep water while confused, he'll drown. Like that, you hear a splash times two. Yep, and again. I don't think this Bailey has any of the higher level orcs such as orc knights or warlords but if it did you'd still be able to drown them that guy had a um an execution's axe that's crazy um note if there is any gear that you want of any of these orc warriors say for instance you wanted the execution's axe that that other orc had don't drown them Although, I don't know, I've never quite figured out how this works. So for instance, if you were a regular species that couldn't go in deep water, and something drowned in deep water, you wouldn't get the items, but I don't know. 
What's the official rule? Does someone know? Um, if you're able to go in deep water, sometimes it generates them, so it is generating them here. I don't know. Maybe that's just basically it. Um, if you're capable of going in deep water, you can... The item won't get drowned. I should have checked that before he ran all the way up to us. Um, he could have had a a really scary executioner's axe. I'm trying to get the food. Oh, there's a scroll of climate. Okay, nice. Oh, I still didn't pick up the food. Do I really not? Mm, um, anyway, we got an requirement scroll. The point I was trying to make in that don't drown enemies if you want gear off them seems to not matter when you're an octopode because the gear is still generating. Okay, well, if you're a wizard or someone with mephitic cloud and you you can't go in deep water, don't drown them. There you go. Um, requirement scroll. We did one of these last episode and I said the two best options are probably jewelry or armor. Um, I'm willing to try for a shield again by going armor. If we could get, oh, maybe I should have waited. I can't stop it now. I can't, what has begun? Cannot be stopped. Um, too late. All right, maybe I should have waited to see if there was a shield in the loot in here and then considered this. But I didn't, I was too greedy, too hasty. So we're gonna have to do it now. Um, odds are there probably won't be a shield in here, so I'm going to roll for it again, rather than go for jewelry. Um, acquirement for jewelry tends to be better later in the game, because the game gives you things you haven't seen yet. Um, we're still early on, we haven't seen too many rings, so there's a good chance that acquirement will just give us, say, a ring of protection from corrosion, or a ring of plus four dexterity. Which I mean, they're great, sure, but not as exciting. Whereas, as when later on, if you acquire jewelry, you you're more likely to get artifact rings and stuff. So let's get a shield, please. Not another hat. It's a shiny buckler. Let's see what that is. A plus two buckler of protection. That's really nice. Not only does that give us some shield to go along with our plus three amulet of protection. Um, it gives us extra AC, so we're going to 6 AC. That is broken. Octopodes are only meant to have one. This is like 6 octopodes. Crazy. Alright, let's immediately turn on and focus shields. We're going to put a skill target on for 4. That is when um, your shield penalty for a buckler is eliminated. If we check our spells with shift I, we can see that they're still fairly castable. So I don't mind just putting the shield on immediately. Um, watch me fail Mephitic Cloud three times in a row when it matters, but oh, it's still, it's unlikely. Mm, I should not be letting um, three of these centaurs all be able to shoot us at once. I just need to drown these guys. Oh, we need to eat. <laughs> like I said, watch me fail Mephitic Cloud three times in a row. There was only two, but we still didn't get him. Uh, come on. Alright, there we go. Uh, Centaur's behind us. These guys are deceptively dangerous because centaurs are fast. They can um, throw these javelins at you multiple times per quote unquote turn. Right. Well, we just magic darted him. That works. I kind of want to have the executions act. I just want to bring it out because it's kind of. It's a rare item. We've got another, we've got, oh, I was going to say another manual, but we've got a manual here. We don't know what that is yet, I think. Did it tell us? Don't know, I didn't see. Oh man, this guy is actually straight up killing us. Let's shut that door. Uh, what are you going to do? He's going to open that door and then potentially just 
uh, javelin and protection us again. Um, is it worth just summoning again? Probably not. He's about half HP. We could kill him pretty quickly with the Wonder Bastard. Um, yeah, okay, that's alright. We'll step adjacent to him. Um, he's then not going to... If he's adjacent to us, he's not going to use ranged attacks. So he's going to switch to his spear, which I'd prefer to his other javelin insanity. I'm going to acid him. Killed him. Alright. That was scary. It's much easier when they just stay trapped inside the deep water areas and we can cheese them. Not fair when they learn how to escape. Um, confused enemies can still hit you in their confusion, so don't... Just because something's confused, you still don't want to be in melee range with it. Was that crystal plate armor? Uh, we'll figure that out in a sec. I think it might have been. Not that it matters on an octopode. Can't wear any armor. Feels octopode man. Um, our auto pickup was off. Why didn't we get the manual? I don't know. For some reason, manuals. Oh, because it's a manual armor. Oh yeah, feels very octopode man. Now I understand. I was going to say, for some reason, manuals are on off auto pickup, but they're probably not. It's just this one is useless. Uh, all that all that nearly dying, using our only heal wins potion at the end of the last episode, and then we acquired... Okay, the, the block of protection, fair enough, but the manual, we got, we got kind of rotted there. There was something I wanted to do. Ah. Go control F and full stop, and it will show everything on the floor. Um, so there's nothing here. It's not showing useless items. Um, I can show that by equals. I just wanted to see. I think I saw a crystal plate armor. No, I think I just did not. No, okay, I imagined it. Sometimes in these baileys, um, you'll meet an enemy who has a crystal plate armor on, which is um, really good if you're someone who can wear that. Not this time. We've got a new identify scroll, so we're going to identify a potion. There's no point carrying around this executioner's axe. I just wanted to bring it out of the bailey, because it was going to be lost forever. Okay. Um, hippogriffs tend to be dumb, so they often will walk into fire. I'm going to put two down. Nope. Well, this works. It's a magic dart him to death. Good old magic dart. Um, here's a B. I was really dumb there. I should have just put down the conjure flame. Because they're really fast, the one turn I shot a magic dart, he got on top of us. That's okay. Um, we got a, a dagger of venom, which he's susceptible to poison. But even if we just constrict him, which apparently we didn't, but um, bees rely heavily on their evasion. They have low HP but high evasion. Whereas if we can constrict something, the constriction damage won't ever miss. So you can kill bees fairly comfortably if you can constrict them. And I was just thinking, um, in all oh, a book, in my panic to get to the Oh, it's because of the other side. Alright. Um, but in my panic to try to get to the Bailey, we ran away from a blowgun that's over here somewhere, which we should pick up. Um, and maybe that... I don't know, I still don't want to train throwing. But uh, throwing is a skill that governs blowguns, so maybe... I don't know. Might be some extra incentive. Is he just going to go around it? I don't know why I even bothered. Some extra incentive just to... Train throwing. Queen B does a lot of poison damage. We can get our poison with the leak. Um, yeah, I suspected she might fly into it. Um, where she's susceptible to poison, yeah. So we're just gonna hit her with the dagger while she's in the fire. If we really need to, we can quaff the leak. Um, we also have one curing, but. That's also useful for confusion, so I'd rather not use our last confusion. 
Um, add a macro on PP. Let's just get rid of that. AA. Um, I don't know if that becomes a, an Emlet's ability. It might. Uh, but it's certainly not one we have right now. We got kind of lucky to find the queen bee on her own. Claim it. Okay. Uh, you don't ever want to fight her with the rest of the bees because if they see you and the queen bee, they can get berserked. Um, we'll just mephitic you. The noise keeps attracting more bees. It's okay. How did you walk behind us like that? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, how about we throw a poison javelin at him? Got him. That should kill him. Yep. Good. The zero, zero skill poison javelin did the trick. Believe it or not, poison darts pretty good against bees as well because it can't miss. Um, and again, they're relying on their evasion for most of their damage. Mephitic Cloud 2. As a wizard, we have a lot of tools against bees. They're susceptible to poison, so Mephitic Cloud gets them. Um, Conjure Flame, if you have a good hallway, will do a good job too. Yeah, and Magic Dart is not bad because it won't miss. So if there's ever a background you want to meet bees on, I mean, you probably don't ever, but if there is one, it might be a wizard. Some others are very good. Um, Ice Elementalist, um, Freeze won't ever miss. Um, it's pretty good too. Spellcraft Continued. Is that the book we just got? Yeah, okay. So we've got Sticks to Snakes. Oh, we've got Poison Vape. Oh yeah, 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 okay. Well, we want that, absolutely. Poison Smite is, not only is it broken, but having a look at our Octopode aptitudes, Poison Magic is the one really positive um, spell aptitude that Octopodes have. What else have we got here? Um, they're the two major ones that I'd want to learn here. Throw Flame kind of doesn't do much that Magic Dart doesn't. It's slightly more powerful, but I don't know. They're both kind of low damage spells that just kind of plink away at things. Um, if we've got one, we don't really need another. Um, Sticks to Snakes is an interesting spell. Um, I think we won't need it. Um, it's good. You can. It uses arrows to make snakes, and at higher spell powers, you can make higher level snakes and you can make whole packs of them but we'd have to train quite a bit of transmutations for that if we're just going to have low level sticks to snakes it doesn't do anything that just invoking or evoking invoking evoking one of the two one of our low level decks of summoning would so i think we're just going to go poison vape here vape nation and i'm going to replace my um, magic dart macro with just the poison vapors one because it's way better as in way way better um, if I really want to magic dart something I'll do it manually it can't miss it poisons things it makes clouds so we can use it in conjunction with conjure flame to make enemies walk into the fire and um, it's just so good it's smite targeted it's full screen can't miss. Did I, did I say that I can't miss? Because it can't miss. Look at this. We can we can outplay this way then. Ah, right. Now I'm trying to magic dart, but we can't. I'll make a new one. It'll be on F1. If we need a magic dart, we still can. It poison vapors just destroys bees. Oh dear. Okay, we can't deal with Erica. We just got slowed. All right. Um, Erica can hex us. A uh, fifty-six percent chance to confuse. So I'm very grateful she used slow rather than confuse. 
She can go Invis. She's got Venom Bolt, which hurts a lot if you don't have our poison, which we don't. And Ma IMB or Iskendrin's. I don't know. I, I usually just avoid saying that word. <laughs> Iskendrin's. Iskendrin's Mystic Blast, which also does a lot of damage. Um, now that we've been slowed, we're in a lot of trouble. Um, particularly if she then goes Invis. Uh, Mephitic Cloud is often very strong against her. Um, if we could just kill the Killer Bee. And then, because this is a choke point, we can put a fire down. Um, oh, she stepped into it. Let's go fire again. Uh, this is so dangerous because she's adjacent to us. Um, but she's going to die really quickly in the fire. She's in the fire and she's poisoned. Um, what if we also... At some point we also picked up enslavement and disintegration wands. I just... I never saw that. <laughs> um, makes me kind of want to train evocations, but still not. Um, let's see. What's enslaving her look like? It's low. She's got pretty good MR. Um, I think we just acid wand her. That's the best way to get immediate damage on her. Alright, and we got a, we get a bunch of different level ups. Our shields made it to four, which is the buckler penalty, so that turns off. We got dodging to six as well. And we made it to level eleven. So we're now just training again, <laughs> uh, fighting dodging invocations. At this point, I think we can stop focusing invocations. Um, maybe we focus dodging instead. So we're focusing fighting and dodging and just training invocations. And I'm going to put a spell target or skill target for invocations at 20. Um, that's very far in the future. Um, and when we, go when we get there, we might want to do more. But I love this skill target menu. I keep, I keep using it all the time. Um, I get really fiddly with it sometimes. Like, okay, uh, we'll do our air magic from 3 to 4, and we'll do... Anyway. Um, you'll probably see that if you keep watching me play at some point. So, we're basically training, fighting, dodging. Is that okay? I guess. We still don't really have any... So, for Poison Vapors, uh, it's a 4% fail. It's only a level 2 spell, so we don't really need to train more for it. So... Um, there's our skills and our spells. Basically, the game is not compelling us in any particular magic direction right now. So there's no reason to try to force it. I'm not giving up on magic or anything like that. It's not like if you're a mage, you have to train magic skills the whole time. Um, but when the dungeon gives me something that's compelling, um, then we'll do that. I'm just going to pick up the Scimitar of Flaming. We can hoard stuff. Um, eventually, as Nemlex gives us more and more decks, we'll start losing inventory space, but until then we can just carry it around. Um, yeah. Longswords are pretty good on Octopodes because they tend to have high evasion, which means you get free repost. Um, hey, speaking of decks, here's a plain deck of destruction. Um, you need to be careful with these guys. Hey, new book. Um, Air. Oh no, I was going to say, is that our, um, <laughs> is that our Lightning Spire book? No, it wasn't. Uh, it's got Airstrike in it, which, uh, I think it's probably worth learning. Um, Swiftness is interesting too. Airstrike, like Poison Vapors, is smite targeted and can't miss, but Airstrike you can use on things that are poison immune or poison resistant. So it's not a bad spell to have. We also have another ring. Resist Corrosion. Alright. Um, let's learn Airstrike then. Alright, so we've got ZZ for Airstrike. Actually, no, I changed my mind. I'm going to put that on the Magic Dart letter. So, um, anything that's immune to Poison Vapors, we'll just Airstrike it. It uses more magic, so now we're going to be using more often um, a level 4 spell and Poison Vapors. But particularly because Airstrike is level 4, we're going to chew through our mana quicker. It's also 28% to fail in red, so 
As I was just saying, the game is now compelling us in a direction. Let's stop focusing dodging. I'll keep focusing fighting because more HP is always good. But we're going to turn on more spell casting for more magic points. I'm going to focus air magic. I'm going to take air to maybe 5-ish and then we'll assess it at that point. Um, I think I was making some really good point before I found that book, but I don't remember anymore. Um, I don't know. <laughs> ah, yes. Plain decks of destruction can be really dangerous. In particular, one of the one of the destruction cards can polymorph enemies. And if you know how polymorph works, it's kind of interesting. You can only polymorph enemies to other enemies of the same, what in Crawl is called holiness. Um, monsters have a holiness, they can be natural, they can be demons, and so on. There are other ones, for instance. Um, plants. Uh, the point is that, for instance, if you polymorph a demon, it can only become another demon. So we saw Grinder earlier on D3. Grinder is a very funny lesson that lots of new players learn. Because if you polymorph Grinder, you only get other demons. And other demons are way scarier than Grinder. You sometimes make a Hellion and then it just one shots you and so on. The point I'm trying to make is be careful of plain decks of destruction, particularly of enemies of strange holinesses like demons um, that's such a like that's such a specific tip be careful of destruction decks particularly plain decks of destruction when you're around enemies of unusual holinesses <laughs> I don't know that so, sounds like such a technical tip um, the point is be careful of plain decks of destruction um, try not to use them as sort of a last resort when you're gonna die and I don't know if you do happen to know the holinesses of enemies watch out for it um, just for science we could we could try it right now on Pikel what did we get? we pained him so that was pretty strong if we just give him the vape nation a couple of times he didn't get poisoned no? okay he did that time. We'll keep hitting him with some of those. Nothing appears to happen. He's also got a wand of digging. So he's just digging through the wall. <laughs> he's going to tick out and then... Is he going to tick out? I think he's going to tick out. And then all the slaves will become... He's just he's digging. It's really scary. Ah, there we go. All the slaves will become neutral when he finally dies to it. It's a whip of freezing. Uh, let's pick up his wand of digging. Um, the one, the whip of freezing is not as good as the venom is. Um, and you scroll, I'm just going to read it. Um, it's silence. Alright, what else is in our books? Swiftness. I think we should learn that, maybe? Um, I tend not to use it very often. This hippogriff is hurt because it was fighting the neutral slaves. And it walked in the fire. I think I said this earlier, but they tend to be dumb and walk into fire. Um, but Swiftness is still a good spell to have. I used to be more of a Swiftness fan Octopode, um, but the more and more I use Passwall, the more and more I become a Passwall fan. So, but we'll learn it. Um, swiftness makes you move faster briefly, followed by a period where you move more slowly. Um, but it can be good for a burst of speed just to get to a stair, to get away from an enemy. And then you rest out your minus swiftness on a new floor. This other stuff, static discharge is interesting, but I don't know. I don't think we need it. Um, I think we probably have tools that are better. Particularly, um, static discharge hurts you as well. So our Octopode has minus 10% HP. We're relatively frail, 
I'd rather not hurt myself if I could. So I think that's it. I don't like Lightning Bolt much. It, in addition to being noisy, it misses a lot. So we're just going to drop our spell book. That's everything I want out of this for now. Swiftness has a 7% chance to fail. So I think that's okay, even without training any charms. Uh, we're continuing to train air magic as well, which is one of its schools. So yeah, we shouldn't have any issue with that. Sneak fire. He walked in, so we'll make another one. Make him run the gauntlet. There's already a cloud there. That's a downside. You can't use poison vapors on a, on a monster that's standing in fire. An ornate deck of escape. That's nice. I'm going to read the scroll. It's fog. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. There are blowguns and stuff around. Um, I forgot to pick it up on the floor above. Uh, uh, should we have it? It's so niche. If we ever have mana, I'd probably rather poison vape or something than try to use a poison needle to poison it. So I'm going to say that unless we start training throwing, I'm not going to bother with the blowgun. We'd have to be out of mana. I'd have to not want to use Nemlex cards or wands. And then, yeah, I just can't see us wanting to use a blowgun ever. Um, Dagger of Drain tends to work on the same enemies that Venom does. Um, things that are immune to poison, such as Undead and Ghosts, are also immune to negative energy. So, eh, I'm happy with... Um, I'm happy just with the poison. Um, hornets are terrifying. Um, particularly if you don't have our poison. They're really fast. They slow you. They poison you really heavily. And they potentially paralyze you. Um, it turns out that even with our poison, you can't completely block hornet paralysis. You have to be immune to poison. So you have to be someone like a gargoyle or... A ghoul. For everyone else, there's you'll block the paralysis three quarters of the time, I think. It's either two thirds or three quarters, but you'll mostly block it um, still. If you're unlucky, even with our poison, you can just get paralyzed and die. Um, so, what do we do here? It hasn't seen us. Um, it's susceptible to poison. So, what we could do is hit it with the Vape Nation to poison it. Step around this corner and put a conjure flame here. Uh, we should be able to do all of that before it gets on top of us. Uh, because it's asleep, this first turn when we poison vapors, it won't be awake. Oh man, it moves so fast. I've changed my mind. We've got to put the fire down right now. Um, and let's fit cloud this stuff. Let's go more fire. I think this wyvern is just going to run through it. Oh yeah, here's a... Oh, there's shapeshifters. Okay, I see what's going on here. Um, we'll just make more fire. How about that? Okay, so it wasn't a real hornet. It's a shapeshifter vault. Um, okay, I think he's going to tick out to that poison. And there isn't actually a hornet in here. Okay. Shapeshifter vaults can be really dangerous because... Um, the game often doesn't really count them, as in it sort of discounts their, the danger that they can have, because it's not really a dangerous monster, it's a shapeshifter that be can become dangerous monsters. So particularly you can get some interesting shapeshifter vaults. I saw one, I think it was in the tournament, um, it was supposed to be a sealed room, it was on about D8 or D9 maybe that had dangerous shapeshifters in it, but one of them turned into a deep troll earth mage. It blew open the wall and then um, an Etten came running out. It was an Etten on D8 or 9. It was very scary. Um, the water Macassan's poison resistant. We can't vape him. 21% um, on airstrike. We could just try. Yeah, we got him. Now we can put fire down. And we'll just airstrike him across the divide. Um, that's not the right one. 
I'm trying to airstrike, but I keep accidentally just um, summoning imps. Maybe I'll do that round the other way. I'll turn this into an airstrike macro, and I'll turn that into a summon imp. If you hit tilde S, you'll save your macros. Normally when you um, qu qu save or quit the game, um, the game will prompt you, but I often forget, so I'm just saving it now. Crystal Short Sword. Um, this could have a whole bunch of different resistances. It could be a plus 10 short sword of poison or venom, which it would just be better, but it could then also have plus 10 int. Could have Aralek, who knows. Um, I'm not going to wield it though. It could also have bad properties. Um, could be distortion, in which case we'd be stuck with it. So I'm going to wait until we get an identify scroll before testing out that sword. But that's kind of exciting. More ones of digging. Okay, more rings. It's an exciting time to be an octocode. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is seven. Curse ring of loudness. Um, seeing that we have quite a bit of stealth training. Actually, speaking of which, I forgot that it turned off at five. Maybe we should get more stealth. No, it's fine. Five is, five is plenty, considering we have two rings of stealth. Um, but that fact makes me really want to just uncurse this ring of loudness and get rid of it. Oh, my books. Book of Conjurations. Um, this is the starting conjurer book. Um, these are more sort of low level spells. It's Kendron's Mystic Blast. Um, doesn't do much that Airstrike doesn't already. It's a 4 minor spell that is kind of irresistible. Just hits random monsters. So I'm not going to learn any of these. I'm going to start backing up. Just going to back away and just hit him with the Poison Vape. The Wraith is immune to that. Uh, the Wraith is flying though. So flying enemies take extra bonus damage from airstrike. So um, we can kill the Wraith pretty quickly if we can airstrike it. I wonder, it looked like it was on its own, so I don't think that indicates Josephine. If you see a pack of wraiths, that usually means Josephine. Uh, plain deck of escape. Yeah, it seems just, oh, I did it again. Even after switching the macros. Um, they can slow you, so I'm just going to blink away from him. It's something that I haven't had to utilize much because we've mostly just been gunning things down before they get to us. But um, we've blinked away and then we'll keep air striking. If I really needed to, we could have run up here to use the hallway for Conjure Flame. Uh, what were they saying before that? I don't know, I don't remember. Um, was it about stealth? No. We're fine with stealth. Was it about some other spell? No. I don't know. Oh, you can't even wear cloaks. You can't even wear scarves. It's not fair. Uh, Maurice the Thief. Um, he can go invis and steal your items. Um, I'm going to poison vapors him. He can also blink. Um, even with, oh yeah, I was probably going to talk about these decks. Even with no evocation skill, we've got about a 65% chance to disintegrate him. So I'm just going to have a go with some of those. Alright, he went invis. Uh, we can poison vape him still, that can't miss. <laughs> Got him. Oh, he had a wand of acid as well. Man, that's crazy. Okay, so I'm glad he didn't acid us. <laughs> it could have been ugly. Um, on to D10. Alright, so about these plain decks of escape. Um, particularly at low spell power. If you're ever going to use one of these with Nemlex, use it early. Some of these effects, um, particularly on plain decks, particularly with relatively low invocation skill, can do harmful things to you. There's one in particular that often, instead of hasting you, hastes enemies on the screen. So it makes your situation worse. <laughs> um, some of these as well. Um, so the elixir is a really good one. It increases 
potentially your your minor region and or your HP region but again that's over time so if you're trying to use it as an escape option don't wait until you're about to die if you the way that you can use escape if you're about to die is later on once we start getting our NEM abilities and we can stack our decks it means that we can know exactly what cards we're going to have and so if we have an exact card that we know what's going to happen then we could use it in a panic situation but otherwise uh, that's a a bit of a trap for new players um, Nemlex decks don't use them to us or don't use decks of escape to escape interesting but true he's a zombie he's gonna walk in the fire never mind we failed it uh, we still don't have ID Sindors are big enough that you can't constrict them Oh, I should have just used airstrike. Uh, Two-headed ogre. Um, don't let these guys hit you. They hit really hard. Um, we can kite him just with poison vape and flames. Watch this. This is going to be a good example of using the cloud trick. So he doesn't want to walk into these three flame clouds. But if we put a poison cloud under him, because he'll then realize that he's already in a cloud, he'll stop caring. So then he's going to run through it. This is a, a trick that I like to call the gauntlet. <laughs> so we've set up a gauntlet of fire, and now when we poison vape him, he had the poison cloud on him, so now he runs the gauntlet. Um, he's not even going to die. Let's make more fire. There we go. Um, I really like that. Conjure flame and poison vapors together is super strong. That's a brown ugly thing. Um, that's too scary, maybe. Um, they're faster than you. Um, they hit really hard for this point in the dungeon. And the brown ones can corrode you. Um, we have corrosion resistance, but it's still not a fight I really want to take. I'm going to preemptively draw from the plain deck of summonings. Maybe this is because we've trained 8 invocations. Maybe I'm just lucky. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> a bit of product placement. Uh, but we just rolled a really sick roll on this plain deck of summoning. This stuff will easily take down a brown ugly thing. We've got a Raiju. We've got a Basilisk who can potentially hex it. And the Fire Vortex isn't going to do much. But even just the Raiju should kill it. We can help with some Poison Vape. Yeah, there you go. I'm helping. Alright, good. See, it went down. Wonder Flame. Not as exciting as all the acid ones that we've been picking up, but I don't know. It'll do a job. Um, that's interesting. This kind of scares me. This looks like... It looks like a teleporter vault, but it also doesn't. It's a room in here that it's showing us a bunch of items that we could get. Maybe it is a teleporter vault. I don't know. We'll find out shortly. Um, still really hanging out for um, an identify scroll to see what this crystal short sword is, wherever it is. You can just pretend that I showed it to you there, even though that was the wrong menu. Check the hatch. Oh, there's nothing on the floor above. Be wary about doing that if there's a transporter on the floor above you. Scroll of fear, we wasted it. Mm, eh, not a big deal. Where'd he go? He just ran away. Sky base of flying. So airstrike hurts them quite a bit. It's at 13% failure. I think five air magic should be enough. By the time we get another half a point, I imagine it will be down around 10 ish. Maybe 11. We'll see. But I, I think at this point that 5 is going to be enough. Hunting Sling we don't need. There's our lair. Hungry Ghosts are flying. We can put the fire down and then just airstrike him. Too easy. This character is feeling really good right now. Um, oh, another plain deck of destruction. Um, we haven't even really had to use Nem Lex that much. Um, And while we still haven't been pushed in a 
particular spell direction, the extra utility we've picked up with airstrike and poison vapors, or poisonous vapors. Huh, it's poisonous. I always say poison vapors. Oh, um, that extra utility um, is really doing um, a really good job at this point in the game. Uh, this vault really scares me. It's not a transporter, but look at this. It's showing off all these items we might get, and then it's this stone wall area with all this stuff in the middle. When we open this door, I don't know, we're about to get swarmed. How about instead of doing this, we X this off, we'll do the rest of the floor first, and then we'll come back. Um, we'll preemptively set up the gauntlet. He didn't see us. We hear two shouts. He's seen us now. Alright. Oh, he's coming. You're insane, dude. You're insane. He just, just ran into the fire. Oh, we can do it again here. Uh, it's pretty not enough. <laughs> just having two. So we'll make him run the gauntlet this way. He just decided to come in. These monsters are crazy. None of them want to live. Let's find out. Crystal short sword. Plus two short sword. Freeze RF minus. Dex plus seven. As nice as having dex plus seven is, it is not worth having RF minus. Um, takes away our only point of RF. Let's see, we've got 7 evasion, this would do 19, so it's like having 2 extra evasion but we lose our only point of RF. I mean, if we ever see fire enemies we can just unequip it, it takes half a turn to switch between weapons. Um, no, I'm just not going to bother with it. It's probably technically optimal to walk around with that and switch when we see fire enemies, but I just couldn't be bothered. Hey, I was right, exactly. Five skill for air magic, air strikes at 10%. That's fine, that's good enough. Um, where are we gonna take spell casting? Maybe to eight. Let's get heaps of mana. Um, that's, we're training a lot of spell casting, which, um, that's a trap, another trap that you often see newer players fall into, which is just training heaps and heaps of spellcasting for no particular reason. Um, which is kind of what I'm doing here, but it's not for no reason, as in there aren't any other high priorities that we really need. We're not trying to get any other spells online. Um, our defenses are pretty solid and we're training those anyway. So it's just kind of like the extra spellcasting is just giving us extra mana, which is just nice to have. When you don't have any, um, oh, we're stabbing. <laughs> when you don't have any particular priority in terms of your training, you can kind of just train whatever nonsense you want. All right, let's go. Let's go do this. There's a ring in there. Let's go get the ring. This could be terrifying. I'm really scared. Okay, that didn't make me less scared. There's an ugly thing. Uh, again, same as before, it's fast, hits hard, uh, but did not see us. Um, oh, it came into the fire too. Um, blue ones do electric. What I'm going to do is step around the corner and then blink. I didn't want to blink where we were because we could have potentially blinked into the room and we don't know what other terrifying things are there. Whereas if we blink now, most tiles are going to take us away from the ugly thing. And then we can put down more fire and make him run the gauntlet. Go. <laughs> Man, it's so good. You too. You run the gauntlet. You too. Should set up like a, a leaderboard. Who can get the most gauntlet tiles? Uh, Double-headed double Ogre made it through four. I think he is the winner. But I don't know, is it... <laughs> Do you split it in half because there are two of them? So it's like he actually did two? I'm not sure. See, that's a Sphinx. That is a really terrifying enemy. That's why I'm afraid of this. 69% chance to paralyze us. That is enormous. That is way too high. 
Um, it has smites as well. If we just set up some insane gauntlet that's like eight tiles long and make a bunch of noise, maybe it will come out. No. I wonder if that's a shapeshifter or if that's actually a sphinx. Um, their smite is smite targeted, as you might expect. Forehead. <laughs> that is. That's why you come to this stream, right? For those 200 IQ crawl insights. Um, but its, paral its paralysis and its other hexes need direct line of fire. So let's reach into our, our deck of tricks here. We're going to throw down a plain deck of summoning. we got Enchanted Longsword. Not too exciting. We can go again. Okay. Oh, that's better, damn. It was a pentagram. Often the pentagram gives you pan lords, which is always a fun time. Um, but we got some demons. Um, because it's just a plain deck and we're still... 8.5 invocations is a lot, but it's not extremely high. We didn't get the pan lord. But I think this stuff should be able to take down a sphinx. Um, if it comes, I'm going to yell. There it is. Okay. Um, we should let it fight. Oh no, the Sphinx just straight up just killed the longsword. Alright, we need more stuff. Yeah, that'll do it. We got Pentagram again. No, oh, no, no, this is working. Yeah, it's working. The poison, poisonous vapors will do the job. Yep, yeah, okay, we got there. That was actually a real Sphinx. That's terrifying. On day 10, with a 60 or was it 70% paralysis chance. Terrifying. Um. Same as last time when we did this, I think we've got enough in, and nothing in the game has told me so far that we're going to want to be casting high level spells. Uh, we're just going to go more decks for more evasion and more stealth. Scary. I'm going to say that was probably the main boss in here. More ID. We're going to do our potions, magic, might, and mutation. Yeah. Just hold your mutation potions, don't... <laughs> now that mutagenic chunks have been removed from the game, um, and there's no cure mutation, uh, you really need to hold your mutations. I've had a bunch of games in the tournament. Oh, curse minus two strength. Minus five strength, rather. Um, where I've really struggled with bad mutations and just not having enough mutation potions. They are really valuable now. Don't just waste them. Uh, we have got our lair. We could head into lair. I tend to prefer doing D11 before heading into lair. Considering all the double-headed ogres we fought here and a sphinx, um, as well as multiple ugly things, I can't imagine that there's anything on D11 that's that much scarier than that. I mean, maybe we'll see a rolker or someone or a wizard and then just get insta-banished and eat my words, but... Um, I'm going to say we probably won't see something more dangerous than a Sphinx on D11. So we're going to do that before we head into there. Oh no, that's not Airstrike. That's Airstrike. Okay, so, oh, what's that? Just Glowing Dagger. Uh, eh, could be Dagger of Elect or Pain, let's find out. It's plus four. Eh, no. Nah. Nah, I'll, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll carry it, because maybe we're going to find a scroll of brown weapon, in which case we might end up with a plus four dagger of venom, or a plus four dagger of a leg. Alright, I'm going to leave that one there. So if you join me in the next one, we'll do D11, and then we'll head into there. See you then.